Hi, and welcome to this Network Plus training video dealing with network media. Now this is part one of a two-part series on network media. In this video, we're going to cover some terminology dealing with network media concepts. We'll talk about wired media, a couple different types, coaxial cable, fiber optic cable, among, among uh, a few others. We'll talk about plenum, the area known as the plenum, and why you should be concerned with it. We'll talk about LAN technologies, again, local area network technologies, Ethernet, fast Ethernet, and gigabit Ethernet. We'll also talk about several types of connectors that you need to be aware of when talking about these different uh, types of cables and so forth. And then we'll also cover wiring standards, the TIA, EIA, 568A, and 568B. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so with network media, we have different categories of cabling. Now what you see here in the graphic is a twisted pair of cable, a cat five cable, very typical to find in an Ethernet modern network. However, there are some other categories of cable that you'll you'll come across. Now CAT3, as you see, is a 10 megabit per second cable. That is not used in modern networks at all. It's too slow. But if you run into an older building, if you know if you're working in somewhere that has maybe some older wiring, there may be CAT3 cable. A lot of you know phone wire basically, you know, 10, CAT3 cable. Uh, it's not used though in a modern network. So we're going to focus on CAT5 and above. CAT5 has 100 megabit per second throughput, CAT5e 1000 megabits per second or gigabit, and CAT6 also rated for gigabit. So just kind of keep those terms in mind. Again, we're just covering some terminology at this point. Now something that you need to be aware of with wired media is the concept of attenuation. And attenuation is, as we have laid out here, it's signal degradation over distance. So a twisted pair of cable suffers from attenuation beyond 100 meters or 328 feet. Now the twists, and hence the term twisted, uh, twisted pair, the twists that are actually inside the cable for each pair, the twist per inch, the more twists, the less crosstalk or the less interference. All right? It doesn't really uh, do anything for us as far as attenuation is concerned, but when it comes to uh, interference and crosstalk, in other words, if you have two cables next to each other, you know, you run two cables side by side, they give off a little bit of, of, uh, of the energy of the electrical impulses that flow down the cable. They kind of go off a little bit um, outside of the cable itself. Not much, but enough so that if the cables are side by side close enough, you can get something referred to as crosstalk. Even with the, ca even the, uh, the, the pairs of, of wires inside the cable, again, could be susceptible to crosstalk. So the twists inside uh, basically disrupt that and reduce the level of crosstalk. But getting back to attenuation, uh, attenuation basically, again, I'll bring up my cursor here for a second, it is, you know, the amplitude and the distance. The amplitude is how strong is that signal. And again, we're sending digital information, so it's ones and zeros, it's binary information. So where you see this spike go up, that would be representative of a one. As it drops down, a zero, a one, a zero, a one, zero. So as you see over distance, that signal gets weak enough to the point where you can no longer distinguish and there's no amplitude on, on the wire. So basically the information gets lost. So if two hosts on a network are far enough apart electronically, okay, be beyond this 328 foot um, delineation, if we go beyond that, then what happens is they're so far apart electronically they can't hear each other communicate. Or at the very least, they're so far apart that one begins to communicate, the other machine doesn't actually realize that uh, the first machine is, is communicating or talking, so it starts to talk, potentially, and that can cause cre or create collisions on the network. All right, we'll talk more about that in, in a few, but for now, just understand the basic concept of, a si of signal attenuation. The amplitude over distance degrades to the point where it's, it's either gone completely or it's really kind of unusable. Okay, so now as far as network cabling is concerned, I mentioned we have twisted pair of cables. There are two types of twisted pair of cables okay, that we need to know about, and that is unshielded twisted pair and shielded twisted pair. On the left-hand side, I have shielded twisted pair, and you can see the individual shielding around each twisted pair. And then on the, on the right-hand side, we have unshielded twisted pair, which is probably what you're more familiar with. Uh, you may come across shielded twisted pair in certain situations. However, for most implementations, for most uh, wiring in a typical building, you're going to run across UTP. Why? 
Basically, it comes down to cost. Shielded twisted pair is three to four times more expensive than unshielded twisted pair. Again, you know, it depends on where you buy it from and so forth. But generally speaking, you know, it's three to four times more expensive. So if you have to buy, you know, a thousand feet and you want to pay a hundred dollars for shielded twisted pair, I'm sorry, for unshielded twisted pair, you can expect to pay 300, 350, maybe four hundred dollars for shielded twisted pair. Now, if, if you're in an environment though, however, where you need that extra shielding, you need to protect against something called electromagnetic interference or EMI, then STP is obviously the way to go. Now, what would be a situation where you would have EMI and you may need to protect against it? Well, it depends on, again, the building that you're working in or the room or what have you. But if you need to run cables across, let's say you have uh, fluorescent lights in the ceiling or you have power cables, you know, either in a wall or run running through the ceiling or what have you, and you have it to the point where those uh, twisted pair of cables have to go in close proximity or perhaps even run across uh, the, you know, those things, whether fluorescent lights or what have you, then that EMI is given off and it degrades the signal. All right, so it can really slow down your network, even bring it to a halt, depending on how bad that EMI is. So in those instances, yes, then you know the extra cost is warranted, and you know depending on how bad the EMI is, it may be an out outright necessity. So just keep in mind uh, the two types. Nine times out of ten, you'll run into UTP, uh, UDP, UTP rather, when you're out in the field. Now, as I mentioned before, twisted pair cabling, common ones we'll run across are Cat 3, 5, 5E, and 6. Cat 3, not so much, as I said before. Cat 5 and up uh, is what we're going to come in contact with. They all use the same type of connector, and that is an RJ45 connector. So an RJ45 connector, as you can see in the graphic here, looks very much like an RJ11 connector. An RJ11 is a common phone cord connector. It's just bigger. All right? so you can kind of think of it as the big brother uh, to, a phone, to a phone cord. Now, whereas a phone cord has four wires, two or four, a Cat5 cable, Cat5, uh, Cat5e rather, or Cat6, we're going to have eight wires or four pair. All right, and you can see it comes in various colors. We have some, and I'll bring up my cursor again. We have some uh, Cat5 cables or Cat whatever cables that have these little boots on them, and they're typically found in patch cables. So that way, when you plug it into the to the switch, and you're constantly pulling them in and out. Uh, it, it protects this little tab from getting snagged when you're pulling it out of something, because a lot of times these will get broken off. All right, so there's different types of boots. You can have uh, ones with no boots, especially if you're if you're uh, creating your own cables. All right, now these nothing wrong with it doesn't make it any more uh, doesn't make it any faster doesn't make it necessarily a better cable. It just protects the metal tab from being pulled off. Okay, some additional network cabling that we need to be aware of. We have coaxial cable, or otherwise known as coax. Now there's a couple of different types of coax cable. It's not on the Network Plus exam anymore. It's been dropped as of the most recent uh, version, so you don't really need to spend too much time on this. However, I would familiarize yourself with it just for your own knowledge because you will run across it uh, potentially when you're out in the field, and it, it would serve you well to at least have a general understanding of what it is. Now, coaxial cable, again, thin net or RG58, otherwise known as 10Base or 10 base 2. Now, let me just stop for one second uh, here and explain what these things mean. When you see 10Base or 100 base or 1000 base um, and then some delineation over here it's going to mean a couple of different things the 10 in this case that's the speed of the network or the speed of the wire all right so it's a 10 megabit per second it's baseband which means it's digital and then the 2 is the distance of that cable the max distance of that cable now when this first came out it was was first spec'd out 10 base 2, it was actually supposed to go 200 meters and realistically it ended up at go, uh, maxing out at about 185 meters. So rather than call it 10 base 185, they just went with 10 base 2. All right, just for your own knowledge. 10 base 2 has a maximum distance of 185 meters and uses a connector that's referred to as a BNC connector or a bayonet style connector or a British naval connector. Okay, there's a couple different, um, you know, schools of thought as to what BNC actually stands for. The BNC connector itself, which is down here in the corner, that's going to screw down onto the connection that that you're uh, connecting it to and it locks into place. So you can see right here uh, the, these two little holes or two little side pieces, there's little slots that uh, stick out on the actual connector that you're connecting to. They'll slide into th this little crevice and then it uh, you can see a little 
channel right now.